y'all this is your girl tashin how you doing how you feeling i hope you're doing great yes you see the title why japanese don't like foreigners why why you don't like foreigners okay comment below tell me why tell me why anyway let's uh let's just get straight to it have you guys ever wondered what Japanese people are really thinking? Well, in this video, I wanted to share with you guys some of the things that they never tell you, but they're actually thinking inside of their head. So I've been in Japan for more than 15 years, and I'm going to be... Jap Japan is, is always a place I always wanted to visit. Just to visit, just experience, you know, the, the, the lifestyle over there, you know? sharing with you some of the stuff that I've learned all along the way. In general, Japanese people like to follow the rules, so when others break those rules, it's very frustrating for them. On top of that, Japanese people don't like interacting with strangers, so they'll try to avoid speaking out at all costs. And the reason why I know this is because I've actually made a lot of these mistakes myself. When you do See, that's going to be a problem with me that I have to learn when I go to a country, not everybody's friendly. So even though I'm from New York, you know, we have that rough side of a, that rough side. I still have a side of me that, you know, I'm very friendly with people. I like to smile and, you know, hi, how you doing? Not to everybody. I have to, like, observe. You know, I have to observe you first before I approach you, if that makes sense. Like, I have to, like, see if you're, if you're you know, see if you're friendly, you know. But, um, yeah, that's just me. That is who I am. But I know certain countries, you know, they're not too too friendly <laughs> do you come to a different country you want to be as respectful as possible but it's just hard because a lot of the times Japanese don't tell you that you're pissing them off but just keep in mind Damn. that I'm generalizing things not everyone is like this in Japan these are some of the guidelines to help you guys understand what Japanese people are thinking and so maybe you don't piss them off when you come to Japan Number yeah you, yeah that's that's the thing too you don't want to put everybody in the same box you know saying that all that Everybody in this country does the same thing or act the same way because I'm quite sure not everybody act the same way Especially here in New York. There, there's people, you know, people around the world might say, you know, New York is, you know, people here are rude. Yeah <laughs> People here could be a little rude, but then you have some people that's very very nice. So yeah Number one, not wearing masks in public when you're sick. If you ever come to Japan or have watched Japanese videos or any of my videos for that matter, you'll notice that a lot of people are wearing masks, getting on airplanes or sometimes when they're just on the train. So what a lot of people think is that Japanese people are scared of getting sick and so they wear the masks to protect themselves from other people transferring any viruses or any sicknesses to them. That's actually partly true, but the other side of it is they're trying to protect other people. When Japanese people get sick, they don't want to transfer what they've caught or their illness to someone else so they wear a mask to protect other people. So what actually pisses them off is that when someone else is sick and they're not wearing a mask. Yeah, that's very, that, see, I like this rule. I personally like this law because, you know, they're not, you know, why would you, if you're sick, why would you, you know, you should, first of all, you shouldn't even be on the street like that if you're that sick. And you should protect, you should try to wear a mask if you're sick so that way you can try to protect other people. You know, you don't want to spread your germs all over. So, I mean, in a way, that makes sense. I like that. You know, you have to, you have, to have a little consideration for the next person. As a common courtesy, Japanese people expect others when they're sick to wear a mask. So if you're ever in Japan and you do get sick, it would probably be good to wear a mask. Number two squatting in public. If you've ever been walking the streets in Japan or especially Tokyo, you'll probably rarely see Japanese people squatting. The reason for this is when Japanese people see someone squatting, they actually think that this person is poorly brought up. One thing that I kind of see personally in Tokyo um, especially with tourists is I'll go to a department store and I'll just see them like sitting against the pillar or sitting like actually on the ground in the department store or maybe they're sitting on some stairs. This is actually the same thing as squatting in public. Japanese kind of view that as behaving poorly. So the thing is in Japan department stores are considered luxuries. So it's kind of weird for Japanese people to see someone squatting when they're trying to like get that luxury experience. It's kind of like seeing someone picking their nose right next to the Chanel shop or like the Gucci shop. So if you do feel tired, then definitely find a seat. I know Tokyo is a bit hard, especially because there's not a lot of places to sit. If you can, definitely try to find a seat or what Japanese people will do is they'll find a cafe and they'll sit there. Number three. That is crazy. So you, better, you gotta make sure you find a seat. 
Wow. Blocking traffic. Now this kind of goes hand oh, in hand I with like sitting this. in department stores or squatting in public. Basically, you're making a nuisance of yourself when you're blocking traffic. So for example, you'll be walking on the street. You'll just see like a group of tourists just standing in the walkway and not letting people pass by. That just like really pisses people off because a lot of people are trying to get from A to B. This remind me here in New York. People, when you come to visit New York, I'm gonna need you to not block the street, okay? Here in New York, especially here in New York, people are very busy, we got places to go. We don't waste time here. Uh, there are people here who have one, maybe one or two jobs and they have, you know, they just have places to go, okay? Stop blocking the street. It's so annoying and so disrespectful. If you're lost or you wanna talk to somebody, try to like do it at the side, you know what I'm saying? But don't just have, like it'd be like, five six people and they just like blocking the whole sidewalk it's, that annoys me i'm not gonna lie it does and you're just like getting in their way and you're not kind of considering others not to say that all foreigners or tourists do this but japanese yeah. people do it too but as you get kind of older you realize to be more courteous of others and you try not to get in other people see i like see like this look at this everybody is i mean i don't know if they're online i don't know what's going on here but it, as you can see that they don't want to block you know the sidewalk or the alley or whatever this is. <laughs> but they're not blocking anybody, you see? They get everybody space to walk. Those ways. So if possible, if you need to stop, don't stop in traffic. Try to go off to the side where you're not actually getting in people's way. Number four, expecting places like food stalls to accept credit cards. And now I've gone over this so many times in my other videos that Japan is still very much a cash-based society. If you're buying street food, probably not expect them to accept a credit card because it's just kind of common sense, common, sense, common yeah. knowledge that yeah. these places don't accept credit card and they will get kind of like annoyed. It's kind of like it is common sense. Like, why would you think that everybody use credit card? <laughs> like, especially street vendors. Like, what? Like, like, why are you know. asking me to take credit card when you know this place, these shops don't take credit cards? Because at the end yeah. of the day, it just makes you look like you don't have any common sense. <laughs> All right. So it just started to rain, so I needed to find some cover, and what better way to do it than here? Let's continue on. Number five: eating at tourist trap spots. Now this one, again, maybe doesn't piss Japanese off per se. It is kind of embarrassing to go and eat at these kind of places because it's just so much food that Japan has to offer. When foreigners go to these like very, very tourist trap places and eat, it's kind of like, oh, you kind of missed out. Thing is, I've actually gone to a lot of these like tourist trap places myself, just not knowing better. And I kind of wanted to give you some pointers on what's a tourist trap spot and what is not. This usually applies to, for example, like izakayas Japanese Jesus drinking Christ. restaurants. So the ideal for a good Jesus Japanese Christ. restaurant would be a place like this that keeps it simple with minimal signage. What you'll find instead with like a lot of tourist trap places is not only will they have their sign, it may be in English, but they'll also have a signboard with pictures, and not only Japanese, but it also has English on the menu. You're kind of like, oh, so they are like catering to a foreign market. One of the biggest giveaways for this is not only do you see English, but you see like Chinese and Korean, you see like three different languages on the menu. You might want to step back a little bit because this could be a tourist trap spot. Oh, one thing though, this kind of goes against what I was saying. Like for example, if you go to ramen shops, Nowadays, there's ramen shops that get really, really popular and they have a lot of foreigners coming to it just to make the experience a little bit easier for both parties. I always wanted to try this. I would, like, this is going to be one of the things I want to try when I go there because they the taste of food, I know it got to be totally different than over here in New York because we have, of course, we have a lot of Japanese uh, restaurants here, but I know it, it got to taste different over there. They just added the English to the menu, but originally they didn't have it. So it's not like they were like initially trying to like get foreigners to come. It's just foreigners started coming, so they had to kind of adapt and add an English menu. Oh, and this is I me. Mean, it makes sense. Probably the biggest giveaway out of all of it. If you ever hear one of those like aggressive shamisen music playing in the front of the store, you should probably run because they're like trying to attract tourists like you would not believe. But at the end of the day, if you want to come to Japan and you just feel comfortable eating at these like tourist trap spots, then yeah, that's fine. But if you want to come to Japan and you want to kind of experience like authentic Japanese yeah, I cuisine, want to. Yeah. I would say just like try to stay away from these places. All right. Yeah, I want to stay away from those places. I don't see that's the thing. When I travel, I don't want to go where all the tourist people go. 
even though it might be safe for me because you know as American I've never been to these places so I kind of see why it does make sense but I still want to travel outside like I want to see how, how people live and stuff like that so before I continue, I wanted to just give a quick shout out to Squarespace. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. In fact, I've been using Squarespace for I think like more than seven years now. And when I started this channel, we built out TokyoZebra.com. And at that time, I asked Michael to take over the site and she had no problems. It was the first time she ever built and managed a website and I didn't even have to tell her how to use it. It's that easy to use. And as you can see, if you look at our site, you can build a pretty cool website with like minimal effort and minimal know-how. Really, Squarespace is the perfect solution for your online presence. So definitely go check out squarespace.com for your free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Paolo from Tokyo to save 10% off your first purchase of your domain or your website. Number six, eating with your off hand underneath the table. So this one was like, eat with what? Eat, eat in with off hand under the table? Really weird to me because one, I didn't know this what? until after coming to Japan. And in fact, to be honest with you, I still do it sometimes. The way you're supposed to eat in Japan is you're supposed to just have a dominant hand, you're eating with your chopsticks and you have maybe have your rice bowl on the other hand and you're just like you're just like eating like this. But, but sometimes if you're not you don't have the bowl in your hand and you're just eating on the table, like I sometimes take my off hand and I put it underneath the table or like just on my lap and I eat with just one hand. But apparently this is just kind of bad manners in Japan. This is something that Japanese kids that grow up with with their parents like telling them to always show their other hand because I think just in general people like to put their off hand underneath the table or on their lap when they eat. I don't know if this is a thing in your country but it definitely is something here in Japan. So when you eat and you want to have kind of good manners then you should leave or you should show your off hand the entire time just like put it on the table. And finally before we get out of this place. Yeah but why is it he's he still explain why what what does it mean really like why well, I gotta show my hands when I'm eating. Can somebody comment below and explain that to me? He didn't explain, really. He just said something about parents always, you know. But, I don't know. I mean, what? why? <laughs> I'm one of those people, I always ask why. But why? I'm like a kid. Why? But why? But why? <laughs> it's number seven. Not cleaning up after you eat. So cleanliness is kind of one of those pet peeves that Japanese people have. They like to keep everything clean you know in general so when you're eating in a public place it's always like kind of proper manner just to clean up after yourself while you're eating and especially after you eat maybe in other countries you expect the waiter or the waitress to i feel like see okay see i feel like i would definitely fit in because as american as a new yorker um you would think that i would be, i would do something like this no no I've been doing this for years. When I go to restaurants, I clean after myself. And the people I'm with, they look at me like I'm weird. They're like, why are you doing this? Uh, the waiters are here, that's their job. You know, you, oh, I will always hear that. Well, that's their job. I don't care if that's their job. That's just me. You know, they're, they're, they're very nice to me. I'm, they're, I'm You know, I wanna be helpful. I know I just, that's just me, I like to help people. So when I'm fish eating, I put everything in one, I put every, you know, I wrap everything in one and I tie this, you know, the wrapper, whatever is that's there, I just put it in one. I put the, the, the bowls, everything in one. So when the waiter comes, she, you know, he or she don't have to like take all the place, you know, everything will be right there at the end of the table for her to just, you know, put it on a tray and just go, you know, that's just me. I clean after myself. Yes, I do people. Okay. So this would be not, this is. This is something I do, you know, so I'm surprised that he mentioned that <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't do this. I definitely know my table would not look like that. <laughs> to clean up after you're eating so you can like leave all of your crumbs on the table, you can leave, you know, your french fries or your noodles, it's just like spilled on the table. It's okay just to leave the table like that. But in fact, in Japan, it's like common courtesy to actually gather all of the napkins, yes. all of like the loose items and put it all in the, the bowl or in the center or the plate. And then if there's any like spots on the table, just to like clean wipe it. it down with a napkin. Make it kind of tidy because in Japan, no one wants to have like a really messy. 
That is so true. And it, like he said, it's, it's courtesy. I've been doing this for years, so this is nothing new to me. Um, and like, and one thing I missing, I forgot to mention is that when I do prepare to eat, I always have like a napkin spread out, and then I will have the plate on top of the napkin. So that way, if I do make a mess, um, it'll be easier for me to clean, and it'll be easier for the waiter to clean. You know, so yeah tea table even after they leave is that an international thing or is that a just just a Japanese thing all right no no it all, it all depends on the person so that's enough about food let's move on to the next spot number eight making people wait this one actually pisses a lot of Japanese off so in general I think Japanese people are very punctual and that's just because they're being considerate of others they don't want to make other people wait so when they're supposed to meet oh my god was I born in a wrong country was I born in the wrong country? I thought it was me. <laughs> Someone say, for example, for work, then they'll usually arrive five to 10 minutes early on site. They'll probably like go up a minute or two before going to the front desk and checking themselves in. It's just like, it's one of those things being considerate is probably on the priority and like thinking of others. So the fact that you're late, meaning you're wasting other people's time and Japanese people don't like to waste time. And in fact, they hate it when someone else wastes their time. In fact, it's, I've been here so long. I'm like this. Maybe I don't have no patient or it's just because it's kind of rude. I don't like to waste people's time and I don't like people wasting my time. If I said to meet me somewhere at 5 o'clock, I expect you to be there before 5 or on time. Not 5.10, 5.30, and 5.40. Like, that's when you, when you do come, you ain't going to see me. You're not going to see me. I don't want to hear no excuses. <laughs> You're not going to see me. So, yeah. <laughs> It kind of pisses me off, to be honest, when people that I have a meeting with are late. I'll actually set up a lot of international calls, like on Skype or whatever. People overseas are always like 5, 10, 15 minutes later, they're emailing me just before, sorry, you got stuck in a different meeting. And I think it's almost like common practice to be late when you're setting up a meeting. But me being in Japan and working in, you know, a Japanese style environment for so many years, I've just got accustomed to being on time or if not early to all of my meetings. So if you ever come to Japan and you're meeting up with a Japanese friend, you have dinner reservations, or you're just meeting someone for, for business or for pleasure, you want to be on time if not early. So definitely keep that in mind when setting up your meetings. But there is one caveat to this. So as people get more comfortable with each other, then it, I wouldn't say it's accepted to be late, but it's more forgiven and it's not as big of a thing when compared to if you are acquaintances or if it were a business. My thing is, if you do it too often, then I, like, people that know me, they'll tell you, like, they'll tell you, like, if you keep doing it, especially you know, with me, and if I tell you to meet me somewhere and you have a habit of being late, you can forget it. We not meeting nowhere. <laughs> We're not meeting nowhere. You can forget it, because I'll do it the first time. I'll, I'll forgive you the first time, and when you do it the second time, now it's like, you know what? Forget it. <laughs> forget it business meeting at the end of the day it's just being considered and sometimes i don't understand why that's so hard for some people maybe it pisses me know. off more than japanese people it pisses me off too and i'm not even japanese but it pisses me off number nine talking to someone in line so again this one is another thing that um kind of surprised me kind of one of those reverse culture shocks when i went in the states i was just waiting in line at the supermarket and all of a sudden someone behind me just started talking to me asking me about the weather or the sports team or something like that and i was completely shocked i think it's because i've been in tokyo so long that people here in tokyo at least they don't appreciate it when a random person just approaches them especially if they're just doing their like normal daily tasks like going to the convenience store to buy something it catches a lot of people off guard and it kind of just makes people wow i guess i won't fit in because <laughs> i'm one of those people depends on my day if i'm on a good day i want to just you know if i see somebody's behind me and they're smiling i'll talk to them but it all depends i don't just go around talking to people like that's not me but i do tend to just talk to people you know certain things you know but other than that I don't like try to hold a long conversation because I could tell when somebody don't feel comfortable, they don't feel like talking, that I know when to be like, you know what, let me just, let me just leave them alone. <laughs>
people uncomfortable. I know there's like there's people out there that like to talk to people, but if you want to kind of respect people's boundaries and their spaces, then you might not want to just like come up and start talking to them. So I think the exception to this is if you do have a reason to. What countries are like this? I think I read it somewhere in one of the comments. I think Germany is like that. They're not too friendly. Well, they fr I'm not saying they're not too friendly, but I know a lot of them don't like to talk to strangers like that. So it's Ger I think it's Germany, Russia, and who else? I forgot, I don't know who else. Is it Sweden? I think it's Sweden. Who else? I'm missing somebody. Uh, I don't know, I don't know who else talk to someone so for example you are lost and you need like directions then you can like say sumimasen excuse me uh, and then ask for directions i think this is probably more mainly to do with the city because there's just so many people there's so many like interactions that could potentially happen that you don't want to like continue to get bombarded with people so people are kind of in their own zone in the city maybe if you were to go out in the countryside it's less likely people have their guard down more so so in fact they may actually appreciate you talking to them don't take this as like all of japan is like this but maybe like in the city areas where people are just more closed off then you might make them feel uncomfortable and finally so how you find how you meet friends how you meet somebody like i don't understand that why people are like that not saying anything wrong with it i get i get it because you know i have my days where i don't feel like talking to nobody you know it depends it depends on my day but to be like this all the time Life is too short. That's a little depressing. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know if I could. <laughs> I don't know if I could live there. Cause I'm like, I don't know. That's that's hard. Really? Number ten. Talking way too loud. Now I see this all the time when you're on the train, when you're on the bus, you're in a restaurant, and people are just talking so loud that it interrupts your thoughts. It's kind of off-putting, and it actually pisses a lot of Japanese off. I've heard my Japanese friends comment about it. It's just something that that is so me. <laughs> oh, my daughter always told me I talk loud. She said, "Mom, you talk loud. I I do talk loud." <laughs> I'm working on it, people. I, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't. I, I don't know if I'm talking loud or not because I'm talking. I'm not. You know, that's just natural how I am. You know. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm American. What you expect? <laughs> people kind of like get really turned off by because people do like their personal space and someone like a group of people are talking way too loud. Kind of just being inconsiderate about their surroundings. Then it just kind of. All right. Well, see, that's see, that's a diff that's different because. I don't think I'll do that in another country because if I notice that people are not talking too loud, I know this is quiet, then of course I'm not going to be talking loud. But I do talk loud because I'm here in America. It doesn't bother nobody, if that makes sense. So yeah, it doesn't bother nobody because I'm in America. But if I was in another country, I definitely won't be talking loud. I'd probably whisper and, you know, because then I will know that I'm the only person <laughs> that's talking loud. <laughs> Not like pisses people off it just means says that you don't really care about the other people around you and i mean if you're just like talking normal it's not a big deal but i will say that it's not like i don't hear japanese people do this i mean like you'll probably sometimes be on a late train and people are like talking loudly because everyone's drunk on the train or you'll go to maybe like a festival and people are talking loud. but just like in normal everyday daytime scenarios people like try to keep their voice down so they don't bother other people so if you are walking around and you don't want to piss people off then just like keep your volume to uh as my grammar school teacher used to say keep your 12 inch voices well, maybe more than 12 inches one yard voice because i was in the states so yeah those are my top 10 things i don't know if this video gets really popular maybe it gets like 10,000 likes or gets a few hundred thousand views and maybe we'll do another one so definitely hit that like button let me know that you like this video if you want to see another one um or else if you want to see what i'm doing on the daily then check out my yeah check out his Check out his channel. I'll put his link down at the bottom of the description. So if you want to see me react more, I don't know what's the next country, but uh, comment below what's the next country. Cause I already did UK, Sweden, Australia, but I still I still have lots to learn though. Is 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 a lot a lot of videos out there. So yeah, comment below what's the next video. What is the next video? 
And I'll see y'all lovely people. Take care of yourself. And don't be having nobody waiting. Don't be rude. Don't have nobody waiting. And don't be talking loud in public. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Bye and peace.